So there are a few things in your life that really change your life forever. And what changed my life forever was when my family took me traveling for a year when I was 11. See, my mom is Dutch and my dad's Australian and I'm like a mix of the two, but I grew up in Holland. And when I was 11, they took me traveling for a year all around the world. And for the first time in my life, I met people from different cultures and I learned different languages and I ate different foods and I loved it so much. My parents are chiropractors, so they were volunteering in local schools in India when we were traveling there. Every year, I wanted to go back to the same place in India. And every year, I did. And every year, it was amazing. I saw my friends again, I played the local games, and my parents were still volunteering there as chiropractors each year. But something changed when I turned 13. When I went back to India, some of my friends weren't at school anymore. So I started asking, you know, where are my friends? And then they told me that the government pays for school fees and school uniforms only up until they're 12 years old, but after 12, in this area, they stop paying for school uniforms. And without school uniforms, you are not allowed to go to school. And a lot of my friends, especially in these poor communities, couldn't afford to pay for a $10 school uniform. And then they told me that because the government stops paying for school uniforms, they drop out. And they don't just stay at home, but they start working in factories or they become mothers at age 13. And me, as a 13-year-old girl growing up in the West, I couldn't believe that something so simple and something so affordable, like a $10 school uniform, had such a crazy impact on my friends' lives. I knew I had to do something. So my little brother and I, Finn, started to design and sell t-shirts to pay for our friends' school uniforms. Then we moved to Bali. And in Bali, I remember designing our very first six t-shirts. And those six t-shirts took us about six months to sell. The next 40 t-shirts sold within a month, and then the next 800 sold within three days. And before we knew it, we were on the way to India to give our very first school uniforms. And we employed the local women in the area to make the school uniforms. And then I remember giving my very first school uniform to a girl called Pretty. And she was about to turn 13, so she would have to leave school. But when I gave her a school uniform, this turned her whole life around and she could continue to stay in school. We just looked into each other's eyes, two girls. And in that moment, I knew that Nala was going to work. Now we've given out over 6,000 school uniforms since we started. We've been working on Nala for about three years now, and every year when we go back, we see massive changes within the community. In our pilot school, there's been a 78% increase in enrollment since we started giving school uniforms because kids from all around the area started hearing that they could go back to school. So all of a sudden, there were a few hundred more kids at the school because we started giving school uniforms. Grades have increased by an average of 23% because their self-worth has gone up so much by wearing something new. These kids have never owned anything new before in their whole entire life. And last but not least, teenage pregnancy is trending downwards in the local villages surrounding the schools because girls are staying in school longer. So this means that this Nalu thing is actually working. We searched for the cleanest factories on earth and we found one in India. And this is where we produce all of our clothing now, which is 100% organic, 100% fair trade and cot certified. The workers get paid super fairly and it's like one of the most amazing factories I've ever been to. Um, so we are moving forward now with Nalu by producing toxic free streetwear um, that supports your body and the planet. And when I was in 10th grade, I got chosen to be a Global Team Leader of the Year. So I got flown into New York and I was going to stay here for a week, but then I ended up staying for two months because I loved the city so much. There was so much opportunity and the people here are so um, willing to make their dreams become a reality. And that type of energy around me was just so addicting and I wanted more. So. Um, I started searching for colleges that I wanted to go to and I found Parsons and I was like, this is my dream school, I, I really want to go here. So that night I got my high school diploma. 
There's something about planting a seed in your head with an idea that you have and making that become a reality. So if you, if you think of something, if you have something in your head and you really want it and you visualize it over and over again, your mind has so much power over whatever you want to happen. So your projects can really have such a slow start, but it can have a hockey stick effect. So say, for example, with me, it took me six months to sell six t-shirts. So that's definitely a super slow start. But then I sold 40 t-shirts in a month and then 800 in three days. So it's all about sticking with your project. And before you can stick with a project, you really have to believe in yourself. For me to start believing in myself when I was younger and when I was 13 was to really start finding my passion first because you can't do anything if you're not passionate about that. So find your passion and then turn it into a project, believe in yourself and stick with it.